I wish good things to you who's watching this. I am Alexi, and welcome to the first uh, ever Azul viewer games analysis stream on this channel. It will work similar to our Carcassonne game analysis. I've picked three games that were sent to us by our viewers, and we're going to go really, really in-depth with them, and hopefully learn some competitive Azul strategy in the process. So, the f uh, first game that we're gonna watch is was sent to us i think it was a casual game or an arena game um sent to us by uh the viewer with the screen named dark mommy x and uh we will be playing our antagonist is a chinese player with screen named obao i'm not really exactly sure how they are so uh here's we get to go second here and Obao is choosing tiles, and uh, when we choose tiles for the first round, we need to look at two main things. One is the number of uh, elements available, so we can see that there's five golds, there's four uh, whites, two blues, and um, six blacks. But also the way they're configured, and also a way how we can create threats, and definitely as many of you will realize, uh, taking one of these two blacks is a good idea because you're basically guaranteed to continue to complete row four, like if Obao puts them over here. And um, then, of course, there are uh, as well two whites, uh, two uh, reds to support the, on row five, and so on and so on. So, this is exactly what Obao does. It's very subtle, it's a very subtle difference, like which exactly plate do you choose the. Um, uh, these things from uh, where you choose the tile group from now we have a variety of options so uh our position is really not that great so our opponent will have the starting advantage no matter what and i think what uh, dark mommy here did was actually quite reasonable so i'm thinking of several things that we can do one is we could in theory take the two reds away from our opponent maybe we could use the reds in the bottom row but this is typically not advisable because this would group the two whites together. Obao would take the two whites over here. And they would be going, um, basically also going on column two. Uh, column two over here, just as we are, with the difference that they will have more tiles and, temp and tempo as well. So we can't really do that uh, here. Uh, we could, in theory, take the two reds, place them on row two. Then our opponent take the two whites. Then we take the two gold here which actually is not that bad that i think about this uh but again there's also there's also a big problem that there is like a big surplus of gold so uh, we won't really be able to build much beyond the top uh the top uh six rows and what you do here i rather like i th so you have the idea of taking the the blacks and putting them at the bottom row so that we oppose our opponent on a different column the problem is that is that we're still giving away these whites so i would do actually one of two things uh, i would either take away the whites straight away maybe for my row three even uh and just basically try to build out the same rows my opponent does no, no, not for row three. Uh, hmm, it's not obvious. Maybe as weird as it is, actually row five, and then I try to build this column. Well, anyway, anyway, anyway. But this is what no, what this is not what I would actually do. I like taking the two blacks and putting them on row four. And the idea is this: if Obao takes the two blacks to complete their row four, then we get the three whites for row three and the starting player token. We're super happy. So Obao's not going to do that. So we go here. What they can do, they can probably take the two whites, go over here, then we take the two blacks and we complete row and we complete complete row four, and then uh, they are facing a difficult choice again. So they either have to take one red for row three, but then we're gonna have two um, reds for row five. So we actually get to overtake our opponent on the same column that, that, that they're trying to bid, uh, to build. Because these um, two reds for the bottom row are crucial. And then we will never run out of tiles for row two just because there's so many golds. So I think this was a bit stronger. Uh, what you did is also okay. So you took the two 
blacks, but I th uh, for row for row uh, five, but I think putting them on row four was simply stronger just because of the, of the immediate threat of completing said row. So of course your opponent gets the whites, then we get the blacks. Yeah, we should really get the blacks here. Now our opponent's probably going to take the whites. So this is what we calculated. But you see, now uh, we have this problem that we can't really place these uh, reds eff uh, effectively enough because we can't place the reds uh, under here. Uh, I mean, we could still continue building this column, so probably a strong move would be taking these reds anyway, because it's important to take away reds from our opponent, and put them on row 2. And then instantly, we are threatening, we're threatening our row 3, because the three yellows would converge, right? So that this basically forces our opponent to take uh, three golds instead of... Whoops! Okay, it seems that we may be back. Do let me know if we if you hear me again. Yeah, yeah, we should be. Uh, sorry about all the delays and uh, everything. <laughs> the technical dis issues can get a bit quite annoying. And also, Board Game Arena had to refresh, but I think it's a good thing because many of you are joining right now, and I'll just walk through the um, my thoughts about the beginning again. So, our opponent goes first. There are six blacks. They have to take the two blacks for row four just so that they can create a threat of completing the row four. And this is where I think we should have found the somewhat counterintuitive move of opposing our opponent not on um, a different column but on the same column. So I think we should take the two blacks over here simply so that we create the threat of completing row four. And then our opponent has a choice. Either take the two blacks themselves, which would in turn group three whites in the center, in which case we of course take the three whites and the start of player token and enjoy an advantage. Or the opponent will have to take two whites themselves, in which case we take the two uh, blacks and complete our row four. Now, um, you do something similar. So you place, uh, you also take the two blacks, but you take it on row um, five, which is normally reasonable. But given this particular con configuration, I think the other option was slightly stronger. So, okay, still a reasonable move. Your opponent uh, takes a slight advantage, takes the whites for row three, which makes sense, which aligns uh, with the column number two. Then, of course, here you have to take the blacks, otherwise your opponent takes the blacks. So, then what happens? Uh, your opponent needs to decide. So, they technically need uh, two whites for row uh, two reds for row five, but if they take the two reds, this would group the two whites, which they need for row three, and you would of course take away the whites from them. So instead, they take one white to complete the row three, and now here you absolutely have to take the two reds. And I think this is where you make a mistake if I remember the game correctly. So the move here is to take the two reds and place them on row two. There are several reasons for this. Uh, well, actually, the main reason is that you would be creating a threat. You would be grouping three golds together, and three golds together is good for you, because your opponent's row three has already been filled up, so your opponent doesn't really need the golds anywhere, but you do need them to complete your row three. Which is why, if you take the two reds, imagine if you take the two reds, everything converges here, then... Now, we take this, then they have to take this so that you don't take it. And they're forced to place the... Well, actually, that's interesting. So I think they will need to... Mm. Yeah, so they will need to place it in row two. And then uh, it's actually... Uh, so they will need to place it in row two, and they will lose one yellow from the floor line. So that will be 
an excellent gain from us. And then after that, we will take one red, put it at the top, and uh, this will group this, this, and this together. So your opponent will have a choice between one white, uh, two blues, and uh, two yellows, and none of them are like particularly good for you. So let's say your opponent takes two blues away from you and has to discard them probably, then you take one white for row four, and then you're super happy. So I think you actually missed um, you missed an option to have an advantage with that move over here. And I think the reason why I made this mistake, the reason why I made this mistake is because... Oh, you played something different, yeah. So you see, you took the gold away for row two, and I see why you did that. You did that because the golds fit the column. But actually, it does not really matter if it comp if the top rows completely fit the column or not, because you will get the gold there eventually. The utmost priority is to take the tile group that your opponent needs. And th in this case, these were for sure the reds. Another problem with this move is that you're not creating any threats. So your opponent can now freely, I don't know, uh, what can they do? They can take the, just the two uh, reds and put them over here. That would be a very strong move. Then, uh, then you're probably going to take one red, go over here. Your opponent's going to place three golds here. You're going to take two blues and your opponent's going to take one white, something like this. And they will have this nice configuration over here with 10 completed tiles. Slightly misaligned top rows, but that's really not such a big deal. Um, your opponent here, I think, responds imprecisely. They take one gold, which again, they're sort of following the same pitfall. Yeah, They're just getting too much married uh, to the idea of um, going, of kind of building along the column. But building along the column matters more for the bottom rows and it matters less for the top rows. So if you have a choice between disrupting your opponent's top rows and creating your own um, top rows which align with the column, it is always possible to postpone the latter because... Um, well, yeah, because it's quite easy to get a sufficient number of tiles for top rows because you only need one and two respectively. But when you need four and five of the same color, uh, more care needs to be taken. Now here, again, you have a strong move that you can play. The strongest move that you can play is to do a standard tactic. So you take the two golds and you put them over here. This is by far the strongest move. Then this would leave your opponent with three tile groups remaining. Uh, two reds, two blues, and one white. And now this would actually cause a big problem to your opponent because your opponent would need two blues here and three reds over here. But your opponent can take only one of them because no matter what you do, like imagine that these golds are over here, you have one over here. Like no matter what you do, uh, you know, no matter what they do, if your opponent takes two blues, then you take three reds for row three, and then your opponent loses points. Uh, well, uh, then your opponent is not, a, a, you, so you take one point for row three, and then your opponent is not able to put anything in row five, and they're forced to take the one white and discard it. An alternative is that your opponent could prevent you from taking the three reds. But actually, this wouldn't be a very strong move either, because your opponent would um, take three reds, which don't really align with uh, with their column, although they have the benefit of uh, completing some of the objectives for reds, so that's at least something. They would lose a point in the discard tile, in the discard pile. Then you would take the two blues, which also wonderfully fit over here, and then they would have to take one white and put it in the discard pile as well. So the point is, if you take these two gold and you just accept uh, this slight misalignment at the top temporarily and you accept one floor line point, then you put your opponent in a position where they have like nothing good that they can do and you would end up with an advantage here. So 
The first round is really the reason why I wanted to um, analyze this game. So some of these things are positional, but a lot of this stuff is tactical. You just kind of look a couple of moves ahead and try to imagine what's going to happen. And especially the standard tactic over here, when there's one plate remaining, you take one group from the plate in such a way that causes three tile groups to appear in the center. And this means that your opponent needs to make two moves uh, and you have to make only one move, which usually leaves your opponent to discarding stuff. But what you did instead, you actually allowed your opponent to make the standard tactic. Well, although they, okay, they make a great mistake. I think, yeah, it's a massive mistake. They should have instead taken the reds. Here, they should have taken the red uh, for row five because now you can uh, play the standard tactic. I mean, you can play the one blue, then they're forced to play the two golds. Then you take the one blue, and then they, then you take the one blue, and then they take the one red. So you end up uh, with uh, two golds here, one red here, and two blues here. So something like this. Okay, but let's have a look further. Okay, so you do indeed the thing they're forced to take the two golds because they can't leave row two empty. And uh, what you ended up with is... Um, well, just a less advantageous wor version of, of what you could have had. So imagine if instead of this red you had this gold, and instead of these golds your opponent had two reds which are further away from his column and then you would have then they would have one red discarded here instead of one red on their row five where they need it and you would yourself have uh, well you would also have one discarded point you would have yellow instead of red so yeah just watch out for the uh, standard tactic so in the second round our opponent gets to go first it's a very interesting run out it's not a run out that favors you they take the two they take the two aha uh -huh. blacks which uh, is reasonable but i'm yeah it, it's reasonable it's reasonable i might have actually taken the reds first no no it's it, it's good it's good and then i think there is a very, very difficult move that you would need to find in this position. I've made a video about this. Like, if the if the colors come not as favorable to you, for example, your opponent has a lot of reds and blues that they can use, then you play defense. So the my idea is this. Uh, so let's have a look at what your opponent needs. Your opponent needs lots of reds, and there's lots of reds, and it, and it would be great to take away reds from them. Your opponent also needs lots of blues, two blues here and three blues here, and there's a f and there are five blues here, so it's actually quite dangerous. But the thing that I'm thinking here, mm, let's just try play this out. I think what you could do, you could take three reds away and put them in row four, and let's see how this plays out. There isn't really... Mm, and even though it, it doesn't align with your column, it just simply does the job of taking away all the reds and you're gonna take one point. Uh, you're going to be, you're going to need eventually whites for this, but given that there's only one white remaining, this means that there are still many whites left for future rounds. So you can actually simply, get four reds into your row four, get one point for that, and enjoy, and just live to see another day. So here, how could scenarios go? Let's say you take three reds. Your opponent could take maybe like one blue for the top, then maybe you take two blue or something like this, then it creates a threat. Uh, yeah, it's tricky, it's tricky. Uh, well, basically, 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 uh, it's it now makes quite difficult for your opponent to play in such a way that would both 
try and fill their rows with favorable colors and also prevents you from filling your rows with favorable colors. So actually very often you end up with uh, row three here uh, with um, three blues here, four reds here, and something like one gold here and maybe two blacks here. This is also quite counterintuitive because, uh, uh, because you might need to uh, separate the blacks, but uh, it's it's it, it's quite difficult to calculate all of this. But the main idea is this is this whole situation where there are seven reds. You can just confidently grab three for your row four and simply use your row four as defense, especially if um, there's nothing you can put in row four. So now you take the three reds, which should have the right idea, and you put them in row two, which is the intuitive move. But the problem with that is. There are just so many reds that it barely does anything against our opponent. There are still four reds remaining, and if they want, they can grab four reds for row five eventually. So if I were your opponent, what would I do? I think I would grab like one blue for row one, maybe. Then say you take two blues, your opponent takes two blues. You maybe take two blacks your opponent takes three reds or something yeah and um then if you take one red your opponent can make sure that you discard the three uh the three golds in the floor line so basically against this move there's a lot of nasty things that your opponent can do and also one of the things I actually don't like uh, clogging up row 2 early. This is a very common thing in second round that you don't want to clog up your row 2 too early because there are multiple options to complete this. You have a lot of reds, a lot of blues, and you also as an emergency have these two blacks together. So which is also an option for completing your row 2. So the likelihood of you ending up without complete row 2 is um, actually that's not going to happen. But let's see how it plays out again. So I definitely don't blame you for finding that move. It's, it's very difficult to find. You're kind of playing um, in a way that just sort of makes sense for sure. Now your opponent goes, yeah, unifies the two. Uh -huh -huh. Just continues taking the reds. Uh, there's really not all that much that you can do here. I guess take a black. I would not care so much about the golds for row three for my opponent. Ah, imagine this. If you take the black, then... Yeah, honestly, it's, it, I mean, it's, it's just, I, I, I can't see a good move here. I just can't. <laughs> well, let's see what you do. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense to take a black. Then your opponent can just easily... I don't know, they, they should take one blue and just simply put you in a position where you get to discard a lot because there's going to be five moves and you're going to have only two rows that you can cover. Right, let's see what you do. Ah, well, <laughs> okay, they make a mistake, so that's nice. Uh, and I think here you should be taking one red. No, I need to check this. One red, then they take, let's say, one black because they want to prevent you from discarding. Then you take one blue and then, yeah, something like this, that could work. Then they take three gold, you take two blue. Hmm. And what else you could do here? Yeah, it seems to me that no matter what you do, you're just going to end up with uh, uh, not such a favorable position. But let's see what you do here. Yeah, you take one black, which honestly makes sense. Then they take two reds. Then here you should take one white, I think. Yeah, that all makes sense. And then they could take their either two blues or three gold Either of them makes sense. They cho choose to take the immediate point as opposed to the adjacency bonuses. Actually, actually, maybe it's stronger for them to take the two blues. 
I think it's stronger to take the, the two blues because you get to lose one extra point and they get to create a more important threat so the, uh, near their row three and they only need to, to take one extra blue uh, for their row three. Also, they're incentivized additionally to take away blues from you because after these guys are completed, you will need blues in row two. So I think for your opponent, it was actually stronger to take the two blues for row three instead of taking the immediate point. But uh, we're going to continue to round three and see what actually happened. So yeah, because of the discard, you're down six points and the runouts at least now comes more favorable to you, although there are a bunch of whites for your opponent and there's a bunch of blues for your opponent, but there are also a bunch of whites for you and you have two threats. So you have a threat to take three whites here and three whites here and you're guaranteed to make at least one of those happen, given that there are three groups of blues you will have no problem completing your row two and given that there are two goals you can be very patient with your row one because eventually you will be able to complete your uh, row one with the gold as your opponent does not need the gold uh, the gold anywhere else your opponent decide to take one red and here let me think about this do we take the starting player token actually i don't think we do I would just allow my opponent take the starting player token. So what I would do, I would maybe just take these um, three whites, put them here, and then threaten another three whites. And then if your opponent takes three whites, then you take the starting player token, something like this. But if you take the three whites here, your opponent decides to take the starting token, whatever, with this or this. Then you take another three whites and you're super happy here. And then you're just able to have um, the full house here, essentially. So let's see what you did. Yeah, you took the starting player token, but it is not actually particularly valuable because we are in round three. So we're headed for round four. So this means that if you are going to be first in round four. This means that you will make the first move and your opponent can take the first player token in right round four so that they get to go first in round five. And going first in round five is actually more important than going uh, first in round four. So you are probably better off actually sacrificing, not even sacrificing, but just foregoing the starting player token altogether. And another criticism for this move, again, it's, it's a natural move, it's not a bad move at all, but uh, you take a tile group which is not really urgent because, you know, now your opponents can be happy uh, accumulating the two blues together because your opponent can threaten four blues here or your opponent can threaten four blues here on row three. There are all kinds of things that your opponent can do. So you have to take the three whites probably, they take the three whites. Okay, now you have to take the three whites. And here, okay, how can your opponent mess with you? Um, hmm. I think maybe here, if they take the two blacks here, you're in a difficult position. Because if you take one black away from them, they can take a black and put it in row three and then threaten a bunch of things. Let's say you take the two golds that take the four, uh, four, um, four blues or even more so, they don't necessarily have to complete. So let's say, imagine this, you do this, they do this, yeah? And then for some reason you decide that you want to take one black and take it away from them. Then they can take one black and they don't have to complete the row three, they can just simply put it on row one and then leave you with three tile groups, two golds, which you have to take for your row one, and then there's going to be one red and four blues. Then after this, they can comfortably put four blues over here, uh, which will create all kinds of threats in the future, and they will uh, finish their round like this. So we've just one uh, extra slot for blacks missing. So they can do a world of hurt here for you. Let's see if they manage to do that. Yeah, no, they don't. Wait. 
Yeah, it's not the strongest move, if you ask me. So, um, I think here you just need to take the gold, I guess. Because you can't afford to do a standard tactic. And then, yeah, okay, they actually found find a really nice sequence as well. So they, well, no, it's actually not such a nice sequence. The thing that I was suggesting was better, right? Because they essentially... Uh, they essentially allow you to get one point for uh, the blacks. Mm. Yeah. So I know that we're here analyzed to your game a little bit, but to criticize your opponent's game, it seems to me that already for the second time in a row, they're a bit too afraid to leave incompleted rows at the si at the end of round. But there's nothing wrong with with. Um, leaving one or even sometimes two incompleted rows at the end of rounds if they lead to something positive in the future. So remember, last round I was suggesting that they place two blues over here uh, instead of the three uh, yellows. And then they would have gotten one extra blue and then they would have gotten five points instead of one point. So it's sometimes better to set up a higher scoring configuration for the next round than taking the immediate one point uh, in this round. And here again, they could have ended, uh, so just just purely tactical, right? They could have ended with the same sequence, except they, they would have still had the blues here. You would have still have the red discarded. But they uh, would have had two blacks here instead of you having three blacks here. So uh, if you, oh, and you would have also you would you would have also had and black extra discarded. So um, yeah, it's definitely um, much much advantageous result for you than it could have been. Okay, so they take the blues, and you take the reds. I think here you make an interesting move. You actually just commit to building a second column. Honestly, respect. Uh, it's good to play efficiently, and I. I think you can still threaten something on that column. I think the tile runouts are like this. So I'm not sure why exactly you did that, but I hope that one of your pieces of logic, why you managed to place the um, the red here, I, I hope that one of your considerations was the fact that, you're, that you knew that your opponent is going to need the reds on row two. And so you will have the incentive of taking away the reds, not only for completing your row 5, but also for leaving your opponent pointless. So this is a tricky one. Actually, it's a really tricky one. Hmm. What do we do? I think what you did made sense. So, uh, yeah, you probably want your row 2, so you go here then your opponent needs to take those and then you can maybe take the three golds. Something like this would make sense for sure. An alternative is that we go here and then your opponent's, what if your opponent decides to take two golds, then you just let them be and then you take two and then you take three whites here and then essentially what you're trying to do, you're just focus your efforts on taking away all the reds from your opponent. And if your opponent tries to take the reds, you can set up so that your opponent needs to choose between either uh, finishing the row two or taking away the two blacks for you. So remember that these two blacks are eventually going to converge in the middle and you could place them over here. That could totally work. So let's see what you did. You take the three whites, which makes sense. Yeah, and you decide them to put in this row. Yeah, this is a completely reasonable move. Your opponent takes the two reds, and now you can safely take uh, the gold for your row three. Yeah, that's all good. Your opponent takes the blues, which makes sense. Aha. Uh -huh. Ooh, and now, 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 what do we do? What do we do? Well, I guess we might just complete our objective with the gold. And then after that, start picking away the reds. 
uh, and because uh, we have a very good situation on row one we have three different options to complete it and I wasn't quite following the tile count but I think all of these options are actually legit hi Glavir, hi Vika yeah if you do have any questions about what I'm saying then please ask them in the chats as well also uh, place a tile on the like button yeah uh, <laughs> that would help the algorithm especially given that this is the first stream of its kind Azul viewer game analysis anyway so you do this which makes total sense your opponent does this well they have the reasons I'm not sure why they did that yeah you complete this row here now your opponent is probably gonna do a standard tactic then that's fairly easy you need to take the uh, reds and I wonder why your opponent didn't take away blacks from you I think they really should have they really should have so because now you take the blacks and you threaten a second column and I think there's a sufficient number of tiles for you to actually manage that so we are down four points heading headed in the final rounds and uh, this is great that you managed to pick up the starting player token because look how important it is there is such a there's such scarcity when it comes to blacks and of course your first uh, move should do the thing that you do finishing the game uh, hi napalm I so not sure really what to recommend to our opponent maybe well, this is really tricky okay this is counterintuitive I think the move that they should play <laughs> to <laughs> basically win the game maybe they should take two whites not one white but two whites and place them over here and finish the game the reason is twofold first of all they want to group the reds here as soon as possible so that you lose points from the discard and also they want to minimize the number of whites so this is an important thing for the final round you basically calculate count how many total uh, tiles of a particular color there is in the first place uh, and they need to make it so that you don't have enough of that color and I think they should actually sacrifice one point over here like this so that you have only three whites left when you need three whites here and one white here so you actually need four whites oh Vika is asking why put the blacks in row in the second row and not the fourth so this is a great question um, so I can tell you this because of the immediate point value so here we take two blacks it gives us five points for the row plus two extra points for a completed row that's seven points if we put them in row four then we only take two points for this little thing we are of course setting up a much more lucrative thing we're setting up um, a column with three whites and two reds but it's not going to work out tactically so let's have a look at this let's say, imagine if these two white two blacks are over here then our opponent can follow through with the same idea they take two whites put them on uh, this row like this then we have a really difficult choice now well I, I guess we have to take two reds before our opponent discards them and prevents our column idea so we take the two reds then our opponents maybe take something one black uh, threatens to complete the row then we take one black ourselves and then they take one white no no they don't take one white uh, they they take something else it, it doesn't even matter what but the, the main idea is that um, 
it's it will actually not be possible for us to continue the column if we start with the blacks over here oh the drawings the drawings thank you so much because of course i needed to do something wait yeah there we go okay okay um no, 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 no. Okay, no worries. This is what happens when you click the wrong buttons. We're just gonna go straight 100. I'm not sure how many moves there are in a game of Azul, but I'm gonna say 120. This will move us closer to the end. Okay, so this is, we just, we, we just need to click through a bunch of things. But basically the thing that I was trying to say is if we need a particular color in two places, then we place the tile group of said color in the higher scoring spot first so that we guarantee ourselves the higher scoring spot. And then we try to threaten the secondary spot as well. And uh, completing row one in that case was very important. We'll be clicking through and clicking through a lot of things. This was still round four. Yeah, then, then come these blacks to finish the game well then your our opponents should actually take the two whites but it's a tricky move that is hard to spot so they don't do that they take the blues but actually they shouldn't have done that because there's still plenty plenty of blues available okay what could we do now i think a good move is taking this one bl uh, one black over here and we will be threatening complete color and it doesn't seem and it's basically a threat that our opponents cannot allow so they will have to take one black themselves and the starting player token then we get to take one white and then if they take one white, we still get to threaten three whites over here. So that's the beauty of it. But let's see what you do. I think there's several options to win the game here. Oh, you complete that row first, sure. Mm. Yeah, yeah, why not? Your opponent goes here. Oh yeah, I, I, and now you can win every which way. You just win with the standard tactic, so you just force them on the four line. And then you're basically, you create two threats. So this is excellent play by you. Uh, you're creating the threat of, con of completing this, and you're creating the threat of completing this, and both are quite severe. Your opponent, of course, goes for the move that gives them the most points. They take away your complete color threat, and they also gain nine points for themselves with that move. Uh, five points for the row two points for uh, the column and uh, two points for the completed line at the end of the game you go here then I guess they need to okay they need to discard three reds in this move that's yeah they need to discard three reds because then they get to lose only okay so if they discard three reds they lose five points and you take the two blues, you'd lose two points. So they lose, they lose net three points. And then they just take the two, mm, the two golds here. So they lose net three. But instead what they did, they, they took the gold first, which allows you now to gain one point. Well, because you're gaining two points for this uh, row at the bottom and you're losing one. And they have to take this and they lose three. 
So you're gaining one and they're losing three. So it's a net minus four sequence for them. So that, that was actually a grave tactical mistake at the end of the game. So we know that your opponent with proper play could have had one more point. As far as I remember the result, that didn't matter. But uh, when there are like three tiles group remaining, just simply go through all the options and then later you'll get the experience of, act of um, quickly calculating which one works best. So as you see, you won plus two, which was a, gr a great idea that you played the standard tactic. And um, the thing that gave you the victory was the fact that you forced them to play uh, to get the negative one point from the starting player token. And the extra points you got from their mistake, from the fact that uh, they just misplaced the gold over here, whether it's where, whereas they should have discarded the three reds first. Okay, well, um, very instructive game. So uh, in the first round, it's about threats and counter threats, and you can then in the um, second round we had an unfavorable tile runout where we could have played defense, but it's fine. You sort of you you did something along those lines. And you have very good positional principles, it's just sometimes like these technical mistakes, calculations uh, of like, you go here, I go here. So when I look at your game, probably I would encourage you to care about the floor line a little bit, a little bit more. You seem to have lost uh, some more points in the first round than you otherwise could have. And uh, another thing would be just like tactical precision of, you know, he goes here, I go here, he goes here, I go here. Uh, just try to maybe go a couple of steps further with that. Well, anyway, um, yeah, very well played. And thanks for sharing this game. We are moving to the next one. We will be progressing. Mm. So our, uh, in, in the elo of our opponent. Now, here... Yeah, cheers, Maxens. Uh, thanks for being here and participating. Hi, self-evident. So the second game will come after a little break when I get myself more hydrated. We are back, and here is the second game. This was sent to us by the player with screen named StatMatt, uh, who is well known, that's Matt Tucker, the reigning champion of Carcassonne, and he has the audacity, the audacity of attempting to become the world champion of Azul as well. So this was from one of the online qualifying events for the Azul World Championship, which is going to happen in Portugal. I don't remember this is, I think, is a quarterfinal or something like this, one of the later rounds. 
and we'll be sweating it out with Matt here and our opponents also a famous player uh, sorry I'm like this that is um, Sam from the no wonders you no wonders TV YouTube channel I love the board game channel as well Sam is a board game polyglot so uh, Sorry, I'm like this. Their opponents are... They start. And it's not a great run out for us, really. I'm not even sure what to do here. I had some thoughts. I think... I think... It could be a bit counterintuitive, but not the worst idea is to actually try and oppose our opponents at the same column. So we might place the two blues here. Let's try this. If our opponent takes the two gold and goes here then we take the two whites and go here um i think our no i th then this allows our opponent to complete four rows and that is not ideal actually no this is not true so if if, if your if our opponent goes here then we can take one red our opponent takes one red we take two blues ah Anyway, so it's 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 not an easiest tile uh, not easiest tile run out to deal with, but I generally like um, Matt's choice here. So the idea, of course, is to take the color that our opponent needs the most, and in this case, it is this color. So trying to um, trying to complete uh, row three. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm like this. Really prioritizes the first player token, and here. Uh, the situation is a little bit tricky. I probably want to take. I want to take. I mean, it's 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 very very difficult. Um, I think I need a moment because I thought that I had this, but I just don't. Uh, I'm I'm looking for your ideas. I'm just gonna try to think about this uh, about this out loud, really. I maybe yes I think I have an idea maybe I want to go with the two reds and actually try building a row five yeah and the idea behind that actually scratch that maybe we just want to take one blue here and then if our opponent takes the whites, then we get to take four reds or something like this. So our opponent can't really take the whites. Maybe we need to find something tricky like this. But in these positions with color disadvantages, there's very often is a solution. But this one's very, very tactical. Okay, so let me try if I go here. What can our opponent do that harms us? They can probably, I don't know, like take one red or something. Yeah, but they can't because then we take two of those. Yeah, honestly, it, just purely tactically, I think it actually makes to t uh, makes sense to take um, one blue. And this is a very, very complicated position. The reason wh why I want to really delay with rows four and five, um, the reasons are such that we might either have to put a bunch of reds plus blacks here and try to build a configuration which is basically like this. So where we have the first three rows misaligned with uh, the fourth and fifth row but then in the next round we try to draw a jackpot which goes over here and it's quite likely to happen and then eventually we get all the adjacency bonuses from this side and we get the vertical adjacency bonuses too so that so we can go for that sort of configuration or we can try to stay flexible and if our opponent chooses to go for this column because they might as well they, they might as well pivot like just because they put all the yellows in row three does not mean that they are committed to to the column where there is row three so they might i don't know they don't have to take the two blues they don't have to take the two whites over here they might as well pivot and maybe complete this column instead or given the large column of reds, they might go actually take the reds and two blacks. So this is still possible. 
so for tactical reasons i would take this uh, i mean i would take the blue but uh, it does uh, it does get a bit weird so yeah you do this which is understandable but there are downsides i think it's being a little bit too impatient because you actually really want to delay your second row because eventually these two golds will converge and this is what you want to uh this is what you want to have in row two this is the jackpot one of the reasons why you want it to be like that is because you have no other place where you can productively use the gold honestly the gold or the yellows call them how you will is the most useless color in azul it pains me to say that given my color choices for carcassonne yellow uh, is best uh, i would play orange if orange existed but i do play orange in Catan, so there's that anyway 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 and the reason why yellow is sort of useless is useless is because you could really only productively use yellow for the first three rows in um, the first round because most of the time you really don't want to put stuff on your outer columns because uh, unless there's a very specific tile run out by the way I have a video which is like is an, is an exception about this it was posted a few months ago um, so if you just go through my Azul videos you might you will find a position where this is an exception not the Azul streams, but Azul uploads. Well, anyway, um, then yeah, so yellow are, is like a, not a very useful color because there are only three slots where you can place it productively compared to, for example, a color like red, which goes productively into four slots or white, which goes productively into any slot. So yeah. Or black, of course. Black also goes productively into any slot. Well, anyway. So this is the reason why I want to keep my row 2 open for as long as possible. So if you're going to use this, you actually might want to put uh, reds here in row 5. But it is kind of too committal because... Yeah, it is too committal a little bit. Anyway, what you're doing makes sense. And as you see, our opponent pivot. Our opponent is smart. They realize that they aren't really that as likely that likely to complete row five. Um, not to complete row five, but to complete column four. They simply going following the middle column because they know that there is a sufficient number of blacks remaining, which they can take away from you. And what you gonna do about it? I'm not sure. Like take one red or something. Uh, yeah, I don't really have a good piece of advice. Maybe take one blue. And then if your opponent takes a blue, then you put... Yeah, maybe taking one blue is a good idea. Because let's say if your opponent takes a black, you get to take a black. It's not easy. Not easy. Well, anyway... You chose to take one blue indeed. Your opponent now takes a black. Mm. Oh, I think now it's easy. I think you should probably take a black. Then your opponents will try to take three reds. And then maybe you take like one blue here and try to build this column or you simply discard the blue, something like this. What you did also makes sense with the reds. But then it, it, it allows your opponent a very easy tactical solution. No, actually, actually, quite, I quite like this. I think it makes sense. Well, the one thing I don't like is allowing your opponent this thing in the bottom row. And also, we could have made our opponent discard so that they would have gotten zero points. But instead, they're getting two points instead. So... I probably prefer black at the top, the thing that I was suggesting. But yeah, it was a very, very complicated position. But the main takeaway that you want to uh, you want to have, if the tile runout comes this awkward, you want to delay. You want to keep. Um, 
your options as flexible as possible for the bottom two rows and you really like want to delay committal decisions for as long as possible and you need to be prepared to sort of pivot from different columns you need to be prepared to make sure that to be okay with your columns being misaligned if your opponent columns are equally misaligned and so on and so on so our opponent is to move first they have a variety of fantastic options this is a great title note for them i think they could take this the two blacks because you need the two blacks here and they will still have some options regarding the whites and they still have plenty of blues they have five blues available to go over here so their row three is not really threatened or at least not anytime soon they could also take these two reds just prevent you from completing the reds but then this would allow you to get away with some blacks okay they take the blacks indeed what do we do here it's a interesting question so i know what i don't want to do i don't want to take two reds and allow our opponent two whites <coughs> actually now that i'm thinking about this i probably want to take the whites and go here and if our opponent wants to force things then i take a white here and if your opponent really wants to force things and just committed to finish their fourth row then they face all kinds of problems for example we can take three blues instead of two blues and take away their options for row three instead then of course they will take yeah so basically i really like the move of taking one white because it's a bit of a waiting move and it's and it's made in such a way that um, disallows you either disallows your opponent from completing row four or disallows your opponent from completing row three but the main principle behind this i mean you're taking the first player token which is very often a good thing you're taking a tile which fits in your column and which your opponent also needs so it's just plain positional principles like this uh, you are in no rush with your second row because you have plenty plenty of options in some scenarios you get two blacks in most scenarios you get two or three blues because you don't have a good uh, way of putting the blues you have of course uh, I mean you ideally you want to place uh, two golds over here but given the tar run out of this round this might have to wait especially since our opponent doesn't really need the gold anywhere so yeah you take one blue ah uh, like if like if you're gonna take one tile then why not just take the whites instead i mean i i, I see what it does i see what it does okay so your opponent's is really committed to not caring too much about these sort of things here I think you can make your opponent make a decision so maybe you can take ah what if you can take two reds for your bottom row then your opponent is forced to choose between two whites and three blues if they take three blues you take away whites from them and you'll always be able to use the whites here and of course if they take away the whites you can put three blues over here and you can still threaten later three golds over here so this is an option that you can do an alternative is something like this maybe two blues over here yeah and then you try to group these three as soon as possible something like this so there are many there are several reasonable options here let's see which one do you do yet you take two blues okay okay that's that is also fine they take the whites and you can't really do nothing about this so you just take the reds right that makes perfect sense 
they take the white and here you probably need to go for the standard tactic so you grab something like one blue and then you force your opponent into making three moves whereas you are making two moves all right so is that what you do yeah you grab one blue excellent choice your opponent takes this and then it's easy yeah you take the whites your opponent takes the reds so all the sequence is completely forced you take the one black and your opponent takes the one blue so i think you could have gotten a little bit more of this round i think maybe this move was a little bit too slow i would have preferred being a bit more aggressive with the whites earlier on but overall not a bad round actually So we're down four points. And this is a decent run out for us. I mean, it's not great, but we do have three blacks to go here, which our opponent doesn't really need. There's plenty of reds, whereas we only have one slot for red, so that's not ideal. And there are blues, which are limited. So that's not ideal. How about there are plenty of golds and golds would go here? So probably we can just finish our row three. This is what I would start with. And you do exactly that. Your opponents, I know that they love taking the first player token, but we should be okay with that. What do we do next? I just want to see what you did first. I'm not sure I understand this move. I'm not sure I understand this move. No, I mean, I do. I do. It makes sense to want... Uh, it makes sense to want to put reds there. Yeah, but I think your opponent has a bunch of strong responses now. They could just take blacks, for example. Black? Yeah, they should take blacks away from you one by one. Black, black, black goes over here. Then they threaten completing the row three. Then let's say you take these away from them. Then they take one blue, they go over here. And then you end up having to discard a lot. Yeah, you actually probably have to discard two reds. Yeah, so they can really put you in a world of hurt with these blacks. Uh, basically, what they can do, just try to imagine that these two blacks are over here. This black is here. And then when it comes to row two, you either need to put four of these guys and then two of them over here. Or you need to use the whites. But all of them will, dis will result in additional discard tiles. Yeah, but the, your opponent didn't find that move. Like, and your opponent didn't find that move. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. It's too bad for them. I know what I would do here. Okay. A move which I would seriously consider is maybe taking these gold here then your opponent sort of kind of needs to take these three blacks maybe here then you discard the two blues no this actually doesn't work either yeah this is quite unpleasant actually no it's doable it's doable hmm i know do i or do i no yeah it's not many good outcomes here if i'm completely honest very very difficult okay maybe maybe we can take something like two golds your opponent takes three blacks we take one gold 
to, into the discard. Your opponent takes three blues. Then we take another gold to the discard. And your opponent takes two reds. And then they go here. And then they create the threat of a second column. But that's actually okay for you given how many reds have gone out. And uh, you will be giving away lots of blacks. But there's still a plenty of blacks to come in this game. Maybe something like this could be done. But let's see what you do. It's it's extremely tricky. Okay, you go here. Actually, I like this. I would have... Yeah. No, I, I like this. Oh, this is also good. Yeah, sure. Mm hmm Yeah, so you decide to sacrifice your row too. I'm not sure how I feel about this. It does seem... Yeah, I would probably not make that sacrifice. I think it was actually better to take these tiles than you go here, discard that. Then they take the two blacks. Then you discard the two reds. Yeah, you will you would you would end up discarding a lot, but at the very least you wouldn't lose you wouldn't lose row two because you ended ended up you ended up missing out on so many adjacency bonuses. Yeah, because you see, you end up discarding enough as well. Plus, you don't get your row two, and this is this is devastating. I think that was the game right there. Yeah, so they start with row three. Then you sort of do the natural thing. I would have done the same. You want to start the final round. They go in row two, then you. Then I probably want to start grouping things as soon as possible. I want to take this gold. So that if they take this gold, I take this red and then I'm threatening this row over here or this row over here at the same time. Yeah, because like when you've completed your objective, you just want to merge everything as soon as possible. And I think you took, yeah, I, th I think you took the wrong one actually, because what I would have done, you see your opponent is not in a rush to complete row three, because now they can just, they can just simply go here and that puts you in some trouble because they can force you to take the gold and have a discard and after after they've done that only then will they probably take one black or something then you take one gold then they take actually four blue and then they have uh, like a a different uh, another column or something well anyway but yeah but i think it was important basically the main part is it was important to complete the gold first and then start merging everything. Because look at these. Four golds over here. One of them could have been here. And the other three would have been a threat for this row. So... Um, that is, of course, the uh, main problem here. Yeah, because your opponents can just easily take away row 2 from you. And again, it's devastating. It's devastating to have a row 2 taken away from you like this. Then uh, the ending doesn't really matter that much. I mean, you obviously drop a lot of lot of points on the floor line. And look, with these whites, you basically blocked yourself. I think this is the main, um, main um, mistake of, 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 of the game here. Uh, I mean, of course, the, the fact that you discard now, it may seem counterintuitive to some viewers, but it actually makes sense. You lose seven points. But if you clog up four rows, you're going to be losing a full floor line guaranteed to decide to keep at least one floor, op one row open. And it is actually correct. 
But I think the main idea was like having your row two blocked for two rounds straight is was the main source of a defeat over here. So um, anyway, so you try and continue. Then your opponent should take the three whites, finish the round. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And uh, well, now we have to accept defeat here. Really, not all that much that we can do. Yep, then you group everything so that they get to play, take the starting player tile. But as a result, you will be forced to discard even more stuff. And then, of course, uh, both of you are precise at the end. But it is not enough to win because your opponent simply has, well, two completed rows and a lot, a lot of things with um, adjacency bonuses and interestingly like the point difference is not even that great so it's 18 yeah so it's 18 point difference but most of these like all of these 18 points really come from here from that blocked second row and even the first time like in round three blocking yourself row two that was sort of justifiable like it it makes sense to try and unclog your column complete the column first but the second time given that there were four different goals available it was possible to actually prevent this especially with four golds when one could have gone over here and then you put the and then you could have threatened three golds to put in row three so what are the main takes away, takeaways of this game it's hard to tell because some of these colors that came out are hard unique are so unique that it's very difficult to orientate oneself in them so the first round was i think required like really really high level of play and with these awkward colors probably the best thing that you can do is maintain flexibility um try to not overcommit on row two too early uh because again you want to maintain flexibility i like how you responded with trying to get the center trying to take away blues from your opponent and your opponent ended up never completing row four with the blues so that's nice and then later we ran into some difficult runouts but then we also ra ran into some tactical problems uh, and the tactical problems were mainly due to blocking our row but also i think now that i look at this i think um you may have over prioritized the first player tile and uh they were ways, even without the first player tile, how we could have disrupted our opponents a little bit more. Th by We just simply could have tried merging tile groups earlier. So not taken from the center, but taken from a different plate each time. Just so that our opponent gets some floor line points when they get favorable uh, colors. So let's have a look at the stats. Okay, so it's actually not possible, but let me try go here and go here. So stats, 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 stats. Mm. Oh, interestingly, yeah, the floor line was roughly the same, but it's mostly about the place tiles. You see these 14 extra points. This is from... Uh, this is from your row two getting clogged as difficult as the position was i think we maybe could have put a bit more of a fight due to threats uh well anyway hopefully hopefully you learned y'all learned something from this game by the way uh, i guess hey you put your opponent over 700 they're now a master so that's nice <laughs> for them anyway this was our second game and I will get rehydrated again. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the chat and I'll see y'all in like 30 seconds or something.
already. So the third game was sent to us by Self Evident, and it is <laughs> it just happens to be the gold medal game of the Mind Sports Olympiad Grand Prix. I streamed this game live, but things were rather fast, so I didn't do an in-depth analysis. Well, now it's time for as in-depth analysis as it gets. But obviously, these two are very, very strong players. Um, and so Chiba rated in the mid 800s and self-evident, even though rate, it rated in the mid 700s, actually their peak is over 900. So um, again, two exceptionally strong players. Now, first round, a lovely first round. I remember that both players seem to have played very well. So this move, I like it because it creates a threat. Either we complete row four, or if our opponent takes the whites, then we take the blacks for row five, starting player tile. This is all beautiful. So our opponents respond in a clever way. They instead, it's, it was quite tricky to find. They oppose us on the neighboring column. It's a quite a common thing to do in Azul. So if you're not sure what to do, and you see that your opponent is uh, trying to build a column, you oppose them on one of the neighboring columns. So either this one or like column number four, in case the colors are such that our opponent can oppose us on this column. Again, same sort of stuff. If we take the whites, then Chiba takes the blacks with the starting player tile and so on and so on. So this is not great. So instead you decide, I think to take the one black Oh, you decide to take the one red for the top. Yeah, this this also makes sense, sure. Then here... Here, Chiba decides to take the one black, which makes sense, but maybe is a little bit premature. Because, okay, here's what could happen. You can take white. Our opponent can take, I don't know. Yeah, our opponent really can't take reds, that's a problem. So if we take whites now, if our opponent takes the reds, then we put here two blacks immediately and uh, our opponent is in trouble. S so if we take this and if they take one more black, then we can actually force uh, some concessions. For example, we can put two reds here. Our opponents will then be forced to take three golds over here. And then we get to put three whites over, uh, three blues over here, and it will be quite unpleasant for them. So let's see how this plays out. This is exactly what you do. You take the whites. Oh, they take the golds now, but now, huh. What can you do? But now I would probably start merging. Yep. So I would take the two reds, put them over here, force your opponent to take the two blacks and discard. Then I would take the two blues, put them over here and uh, and be happy. Our opponent would need to take the blue. So I think you saw all of that. Oh, this is an excellent point. So column N-1, so one to the left, is better than column N plus one because you need one less of every color. This is actually a great, great idea. So, and this is exactly what you did, right? Mm. And well, the, oh, this is exactly what Chiba did. So you put the whites and they put the blacks and they need four blacks, whether you need five blacks, they need three uh, whites, whether you need four whites, and so on and so on. Huh, that's, uh, yeah, that's that's well put. Okay, yeah, you took, yeah, you do this, it's, uh, it's more of a tactical thing. So I think what Chiba did with the black maybe was not necessarily the strongest move. I, yeah, you, you know what? Completing rows is overrated. If instead Chiba, I don't know, like two, took two reds or something, to have a configuration of two reds plus two blacks 
is really almost as valuable as having completed four blacks because you only you're gonna have nine tiles here eventually but um if you have uh, but uh you sort of would be developing colors in a bit more balanced way because now as cheaper you're really hoping for a tile run out with a lot of whites and a lot of reds something like this and then if there are lots of blacks then you really can't do all that much Shiba goes there. Yeah, that makes sense. And so we have a massive, we have a healthy advantage, I would say. Um, we have two extra tiles and one extra point. And we have a decent run out. Mm, I need to look at the notes that you sent me about round two. Ah, I remember that's going to be a key moment. So we have lots of blacks that our opponent needs, but our opponent also has reds, which we need. So, no, no, our opponent has lots of reds, which we don't really need. So we, this is a bit of a problem for us. I think you've started with, okay, with one blue that actually makes good sense because you're still preserving the option of having four blues over here your opponent does not really need the gold unless they do one particular sinister thing that i have in mind yeah this one then it sort of forces you to take away the three golds from them then they take two of those. Hmm. What do we do? What do we do? Maybe. How about we take one black over here? think that could work and then if uh your opponent takes reds we take two black your opponent takes three blues we take two black your opponent takes three whites something like this and then your opponent takes two whites over here yeah i think it's actually not such a big of a problem if we allow our opponent to essentially finish the column yeah because if we don't imagine if we take like a, a, a white one then suddenly our opponents can i don't know finish row three with blacks that would also be a bit unpleasant no, no actually they, they're not going to do that yeah it's, it's it's a tricky tricky situation mm. so you played this move yeah and now your opponent took the one black and this is a very strong move um so even though Mm. Even though it does not align with their column, it's actually make sure that it is hard. Well, basically, they, they sacrifice adjacency bonuses, but they also make it sure that it's hard for you to get adjacency bonuses as well. And there's really no easy way to navigate this uh self-evident saying two black might be stronger here are you talking about the very first move of the round i think it could also work well yeah and uh No, actually, it's not. It's not like such a bad position. It's sort of relatively equal. 
Ah, Chiba's move of two blocks. Well, anyway, so w what we get from this round, we had like a variety of options either to allow our opponent to complete a column or to disrupt it. I think both of them were reasonable. I would have probably, I would have, you know, like, intuition tells me that I would have even allowed our opponent to complete the column because in this configuration, we would have had the same thing. So here's, here, here was the alternative, like, our opponent would have had one white more here, and like they are going to complete the row three sooner or later. Like it's not such a big deal. But we would have had a black here instead of white, just single black. And then our opponent would have had a blue here instead of black, and they would have had an extra four line point for the blues. So this would have been the alternative configuration. And I start liking that configuration a little bit more because look at this, look at this. Uh, they have one black here and we have one white here. But our white here is a little bit weaker than the black because they, um, like we're slightly, mo we're slightly more likely to miss out on adjacency bonuses than they do. Because for our optimal tile placement, we will need black here and black here. And then for their... I need to go through this again. So from this configuration, why they have a slight advantage at the top. For us to have a maximum number of points from the top row, we need to go black, gold, blue in that particular order. Like This is our ideal scenario. But from this configuration, they need to go red, and then they have two options, either blue first or white first, depending on the tile run out of future round. So their configuration at the top is a little bit stronger. And in the alternative run out, in the alternative, uh, so remember, the alternative with a different move sequence was that we allow them to complete this, so that would be one more white. Uh, we would have had one more black here, they, uh, this would be here, they would have had a blue here and they would have had an extra floor line point. So there are two important things here. One is the extra floor line point, it's not nothing. And second is the fact that this configuration, red plus black, is stronger than blue plus gold. Because again, with blue plus gold, there are, uh, there's only one sequence how they can maximize their points. It's red, then black, then white in that particular order how they get three then four then five uh, points for the adjacency bonuses at the top row but our configuration with red plus back is more flex red plus black would have been more flexible because we can either go gold blue white or we can go gold white blue or we can go white gold blue so we have three possible sequences that maximize our point value uh, across multiple rounds and they have only one possible color sequence that they can use from that configuration so if you ask me that was that probably would be worth it to actually just allow them to finish row three because they're going to do that anyway but um, I mean w what you did certainly makes sense as well you have uh, control in this game, uh, I think you also got a pretty decent tile run out as well. And you start with a single black, which I rather like, because you help yourself with row four first, and you are giving them a choice if they want to mm, take the reds, then they need to take the first player tile, but they also lose a point for that. And you may be okay with them taking the first player tile. Yeah, you just may be okay with them taking the first player tile uh, simply because it gives them a negative point and it would allow you to take the first player tile for in round four in the first place, so you would go first later. So. They take this... Oh, you don't do that? Yes, you do that, you do that. They take the reds. 
Ah. I think now comes the main move that we're talking about. I think there was something stronger than what you actually did. So the move that first comes to mind to me is one black for the top. Uh, several reasons. Reason one, it's, 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 it scores the highest. And, uh, well, nice adjacency bonuses. Reason two, it groups together two blues. So it kind of forces your opponent to decide whether they want to give you two blues for row four or not. And your opponent doesn't really have a good place for the blues. I guess they could place the blues over here, but then again, it's not really what they want to put there. They want to put reds there and like reds over here and so on and so on. Reason three, uh, you go here and then you merge three whites, which means that now they are in a bit of trouble regarding white. So let's say if they, if they take the two blues away from you, which they're not going to do, which they shouldn't do, if they take the blues away from you, then you can actually, like, I don't know, you can take, well, you have a variety of options. You can take, I don't know, oh, what can you do? One blue, for example, and put it over here. And then you merge together four yellow, four, uh, four gold and, and four um, yellows. So, so, so four blues and four yellows, like all this comes into the center. The, the merging for, like merging this is unacceptable for them. So they will need to take care of their th row, row three issues first. And then finally, then you'll be able to take the blacks here, which fits you perfectly, and then group the four reds. And here you ha will have a nice choice for uh, what you can do with row three. So that's the idea. And I think genuinely the move of, um, of uh, one black could be the strongest here. So just purely tactically, but uh, why it is the strongest positionally, how you can think. If you need the same color in multiple places, and uh, for example, the color black, you need it here, here, here. And by need, I mean that if you put that color here, it is the most optimal color that you put there. Then you actually want to be very surgical about how you take the tiles. You want to like take them as soon as possible, one by one before they merge, and you want to merge the tile that your opponent needs. So for example, your opponent needs the whites here, and maybe your opponent needs some whites here, uh, because they have two options. They can either use reds here or the whites for row two. And then by taking this move, you're actually denying them this option because you're merging white from three tile groups to two tile groups. So that would have been unpleasant for them. Uh, yeah, and the move that you played, it has a different idea. But the reason why I think merging four reds is not as powerful, that is because, mm, well, they have a perfectly good use for merged reds. Uh, they can just simply take the two whites, go over here. And uh, then you're facing a difficult choice because you can't really take away reds from them early enough because as soon as you place reds in row three your row three is clogged and your opponent can play against the floor line that your opponents can merge four yellows force four yellows into the floor line but before your row three is filled your opponents cannot merge four yellows because four yellows are very very good for you so it's uh, interesting how in this sort of configuration, of course, you want to keep your row three for uh, open for as long as possible. Um, so yeah, it's like, I actually have noticed that you, you do that quite a lot. So I think in, in your strategy, you pay a lot of attention to merging tiles together that your opponent needs. I think just in this particular instance, because reds fit so well in row four, um, that ended up not being so lucrative. And you see, now you sort of, you want to take the reds, but you really can't because it's now, um, there's, uh, well, some, some, it's gonna be some problems 
I will be created by that. So you take the blues, which makes sense actually. Oh, your opponent takes the black, it's painful. Yeah, now it's this. Your opponent takes this and... Yeah, you take the blue. Yeah, and, and... Oh, actually if I were your opponent, I would have probably taken the four reds. <laughs> But what do I know? Yeah, you know what? If I were your opponent, I would have taken the four reds and actually tried to maybe create a complete color threat in the future. But I might not know something about the tile... Um, the number of colors remaining. I wasn't quite following that. But uh, th there were several plays of playing against this. It was a favorable run out for Chibo overall. And I think they managed to get something out of this in this round, even though the configurations, the, conf the configurations looks quite good for you. So excellent run out for them because of lots of whites, but also good run out for you because lots of gold and you can totally use them. Now they take one white. You really can't do all that much about it. So I think what you ended up doing... Oh, you were taking the red, and I, and I like that move. Because, yeah, we, but we discussed this before, and also noticed it on stream. So this is basically to make sure that your opponent does not get the reds here, and it's super annoying for them. Because they needed three ways for re or three reds for optimal placement. Here, one for six points, and here, two more for six points. And now there will be two more reds in total, so they will be really able to get either this or this, but not both. But um, given the fact that there's so many blues remaining in the deck, and we can see that in the bag, I mean, we can see that with a naked eye, but I'm sure that you're very good at tile tracking as well. So you probably knew ex the exact number at that point. Actually, did you, knew, did you know the exact number at that point? I'm, I'm very curious. Especially when I play on stream, I get quite just too focused on the strategy and I forget about um, tile tracks quite easily. Mm. Which is why I like live tournaments, because they are just allowed to look in the box and you can always see the discarded uh, tiles. Oh, okay, so you did, did, did know the tiles, yeah. So I think here... Yeah, just simply discarding the tile was was better. Um, okay, so we're gonna do now. Yeah, two gold. Oh yeah, you go with the with the blue. That makes sense. And then you take the gold. Yeah. Then we see a standard tactic, which again, very good over here for seven points. You're guaranteed to complete row one or two. They should be taking the whites. You are taking the blues, of course, for maximum adjacency bonuses. And you take the reds and they discard the black. So overall, yeah, I think if we just have the same exact round, but simply discard the two reds, we're doing just much, much better. And this is purely um, due to the number of tiles remaining. Ah, this is a great option that actually you could have placed whites on here simply because there's so many blues remaining but i don't think there was really a good way of doing that without discarding something right either you end up discarding two of these blues or you're you're get you, like you're you you don't get to have these goals like your opponent can go over here and get one point with four gold it seemed to me that in the previous round if you try to put white here it does not white work if I'm not mistaken yes exactly the tempo was not good 
so that's by what I that's what I mean that's what I um, mean by it so well plenty of ways of play to play this let's see what's the most optimal one oh this is tricky hmm what if we so just my first thought is to use one gold here to create a threat uh, then this would maybe force your opponent to take the gold and then ah and then you can take one black merge the two whites together then your opponent is forced to respond so they take the two whites and then after that, you mer you take. Uh, yeah, it's not gonna quite work like this, is it? Well, basically, there's a there's a way of doing this to force your opponent into taking the first player tile. Now, given that there are eight points ahead, is there something else that we can do? Well, let's say if we take one gold here, your opponent decides to forego the gold and they just simply take i don't know two reds or something yeah then we just take the gold and we enjoy like a boatload of points so i don't think ah okay okay let's yeah indeed so you, you if you take one yellow your opponent can take one white for example this one for the top okay well then you take one white put it here then if your opponent takes two gold to take it away from you then maybe you take one black and merge four reds together which sort of forces your opponent into taking into taking four reds maybe And then as a result, oh yeah, as a result, you actually get saddled with blues, but maybe that's okay. Yeah, he will give you six blues. Wait, I'm thinking about this. Actually, is there ever is there ever a way how we can win and concede complete color? Okay, this is this is crazy, but I want to have a look at this. Okay, so we go here. He takes like one white or something. We just don't care, we just go here. He takes one white. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think it quite works, because if we take one black, then our opponents can go here with two blacks, then we take four reds, and then we also get to discard six. But then our opponent doesn't have anything in row two. It's, it's actually quite... Uh, Genki is saying I lack the depth of these round fives. A lot of them really is just like tactical calculation. So it's it's very little of that is positional. In my round five for the World Championship Qualifier Tournament, in the final game, in order to find the winning sequence, I think I spent like an, close to an hour just on round five trying to permutate through these options. So yes, content of that is coming soon. But anyway, let's try to figure this out. Okay, so here's in this situation where we sacrifice complete color, what kind of points are we having? So we are having three blues, uh, three golds. Our opponent is having this and this. Let's just actually try and look at this, okay? Uh, we are having the starting player token here. 
we are having the black here. Our opponent has two blacks here. We have four reds here. Our opponent has one black here. And we have six blues discarded. Okay, does that work? And then let's see what the actual net point count is. So, uh, we are at plus eight. For the top line, we would be getting plus two, right? Uh, so, okay, so here are these, these things, right? This will be the thing. So for the top line, we're getting plus two. Then they're immediately compensating it here, so that's going to be zero. Then for this line, we're getting seven. Seven. So from 18, there's going to be 15. Oh, yeah. And then we lose 14 points on the floor line, so that's plus one. And <laughs> our opponent has complete color. So we lose. Yeah, so, so we just lose the game. We still had to check it. We still had to check it again. Seven points here. That's 15. Yep, yep, exactly, exactly, exactly. So, uh, so again, bad idea. Don't concede complete color. That's that's it. This is what you learn from the stream. Don't concede. Don't give your opponent plus 11 move uh, with no reason. Mm. Okay, another option. What if we, like, I like forcing moves. So, but by the way, for these final rounds, consider forcing moves first. Let's say if we go with one white over here, your opponent is forced to take one white in order to prevent you from finishing this. Then, what if you go like with one red over here and try to merge the three golds? Hmm? I like the idea. Hmm. Then, I don't know, your opponent takes the reds or something. And then we take the blacks. Yeah, we also end up, we actually we just ended up getting saddled with six blues. Or, but if we get saddled with six blues, our opponent gets saddled with like four blacks. So that's fine. Okay, so let's try again. So we go here. And our opponent goes here. You're saying that might be a correct move, yeah? And then we take... Yeah, I think actually this could this could really work. And we have plenty of plenty of blacks remaining uh, to put something over here. And then let's say if our opponent chooses at any point to take three golds, then it's quite the sacrifice that they need to throw on the floor. And then we can go like here uh your opponent takes the blacks and then we go here so yeah so th then in that event if we get saddled with six blues it's not that big of an issue because then our opponent doesn't have this or our opponent has something on the floor line as well so i think that might be it oh and this is what you do then they're forced to go here and then did you merge the golds? Oh, okay, so you went there instead. So you went there instead. But does this allow our opponent something that they should be getting away with? Okay. What if our opponent takes one gold here? then we have no choice but to be saddled with these blacks. If our opponent takes one gold, then I guess we take four reds or something, place them over here. 
Then our opponent takes two blacks. Then we take two golds. Then our opponent takes two blacks. Then we discard everything. Do we win in that case? We have plus eight due to this. Well, this will be equal. We're going to have plus 10 because of this, plus nine because of this. And then our opponent will have two discards. We have, we'll have this, so minus 12, plus nine, minus three. So I think we're losing. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So if our opponent goes here with the one gold, I think unless we're like super, super careful, we might be losing. So, okay. So what you suggest if our opponent goes here, then we take two blues and discard them and create the threat of four blacks. And this might be it. Because then... Let's say our opponent chooses to take four reds or something, which they should. Then we take four golds. Then they take four blues. Then we take four blacks, something like this. And then somehow we end up not discarding anything, so that's fun. And then uh, who wins in that case? So we have plus eight, a uh, plus 10 because of the top row. We have, uh, because of this, plus four, because they lose six. Then because of this, we have plus one, and then because of this, they have seven, we have minus six, but here we have four, so we're minus two. Oh, then it's a tie, then it's a tie. Yes, 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 because they have one of those discarded more. I don't know how many of you could follow, but basically, this is like another common tactic in the um, in tight end games, is that you make, first of all, you create threats, and the threat of creating four black, like this can give us four extra points. But also, um, yeah, so four black is, is what can give us the extra points. And then the other thing that we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that at all cost our opponents goes uh, takes the starting player tile. Genki saying would be great for analysis if you let you play out the moves. Yeah, that would be really nice. At least in Carcassonne, board game board game arena like allows to put the tile or something. Uh, what I try to do myself, like when I draw on the screen, I try to, well, I, I try to like draw tiles here, I guess. But anyway, I think the main idea is like the principle that we could have tried doing to make sure that we win was to merge together these three golds, creating a threat for seven points and at the same time uh, forcing our opponents extra stuff in the floor line if they choose these three, these three goals. So that um, that would have worked as well. But given the tournament situation, a tie, a tie is perfectly good for us. For those of you who weren't watching the Mind Sports Olympic Grand Prix, the way this works is that in case of a tie in the game, then the winner who was highest in the preliminary tournament standings, the high ranked player, is declared the winner of the tournament and this happened to be exactly self-evident because self-evident scored better in the preliminary tournament uh before the playoffs so headed into this game well actually self-evident i'm not sure if you did you know that you would be declared the winner in case of a tie 
did you check the rules before or was that like a pleasant surprise or something? Because I think I sort of kind of knew. But um, yeah, and by the way, uh, don't worry, like for the, for the sake of analysis, so this is precisely what's going to happen. Like in order to avoid the starting player tile, uh, which would give us negative points, and in order to avoid being saddled with all these blues, we take only two blues off and then we create the threat of four black. So this is rather a nice way to um, achieve a tie. Self-evident the saying that you didn't know about the tournament rules. Uh, well, that's, yeah, fair enough. Also, by the way, for those of you who didn't watch, so because uh, it was the Mind Sports Olympiad and it's like a bit, well, it's organized by Europeans. So most of the time zones are suitable for Europeans in the first instance. So I think by that time, it was... 4 a.m. in China and 5 a.m. in Japan, or something ridiculous like this. <laughs> so, um, both players were actually making really... high scoring, well, like high, high level plays. Uh, with all that, yeah, high, high level plays, be, plays they basically despite sleep deprivation. So, what are the main takeaways from this game? First of all, round one, remember, it's all about creating threats, creating threats, like, I'm gonna complete this row, then uh, taking large tile groups, not prioritizing the first uh, round uh, token too much, and then a lot of, um, uh, and some tactics in this game that we saw were about the floor line, which matters really a lot in the highest le level play. Everybody's trying to be super efficient and um, like merging tile groups that would f be suitable for your opponent, making sure that your opponent is like on the heels trying to either sacrifice points so that they finish their objectives and they discard tiles, or they simply don't finish their objectives. So we saw a lot of that as well and uh, in cases where you can successfully merge tiles for your opponent that prevent them from I don't know putting one tile in row one if instead they're forced to put four tiles in row one this is of course uh, a very pleasant outcome given that they need to discard three out of these four tiles uh, and a lot of that at the highest level like is tactic it's really like you go here I go here I go here so they're just simply permutation of these opportunities which like takes quite a lot of cognitive power but with these uh positional principles of merging uh or of separating tile groups kind of picking them one by one if you need the same color in different places like remember in that round where we need we needed black here here and here i think that was uh, round three when that happened so if you know these positional principles then you're actually more likely to notice the tactical sequences that work well, uh, anyway, congrats on your gold uh, medal again, and uh, thank you for everybody for watching. That was quite a uh, long stream, certainly longer than I had expected. But in case you are interested, I am going to do more of those. So, uh, several things. If you want to submit mm -hmm. games, then either send me a message in board game arena or send me an email to the channel email address which you can see in the channel description go to my channel page also subscribe unless you have to but i think most of you have uh then uh, put a place a tile on the like button that's super helpful for the algorithm especially given that this is the first video of its kind and um if you all found this especially useful and if you can afford this i have enabled the super th thanks button uh, which I would be also appreciative, appreciative a lot, and that would help with the channel as well. Thank y'all so much for watching, and I'm gonna see you soon.